Hello and welcome to this edition of Wineskins. I'm Father Jim Corda. Wineskins is a program that features reflections on the lives of the saints and the sacred scriptures, along with a variety of issues and topics, all from a Catholic perspective. Wineskins is brought to you through the annual Bishop's Appeal, the Catholic Communication Campaign, and St. Paul's Catholic Books and Gifts, a division of the Society of St. Paul. On our program today, I will interview Sister Janet Gardner in the final part of our three-part series from the television show Spotlight. We will talk about Beatitude House. We will also hear more information on the life and times of St. Padre Pio. And today, as the Church celebrates the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we will get a deeper insight into those particular Sunday readings. That and more on Wineskins. Catholic Charities is an important part of the life of the Church. To tell us more about immigration is Father David Bergner. The Gospel challenges each of us to respond to today's refugee crisis. Michael Jackson popularized the song, Man in the Mirror. Who would you see when you look at yourself in the mirror? Pope Francis has challenged us all in this Jubilee Year of Mercy to become merciful like the Father. The person you see in the mirror determines your window to the world. Can you see out of your windows those who have borne the burden of human suffering and social injustice? Biblical revelation urges us to welcome the stranger. It tells us that in so doing, we open doors and windows to God, and that in the faces of others, we see the face of Christ himself. What is your window to the world? your outlook. Pope Francis locates this encounter with oneself, others, and the world in the concept of integral theology. To quote Pope Francis from his pastoral Laudate Si, integral ecology is a relationship between nature and the society which lives in it. Nature cannot be regarded as something separate from ourselves or as a mere setting in which we live. We are part of nature, included in it, and thus in constant interaction with it. Humanity has the ability to work together in building our common home. Men and women are still capable of intervening positively. All is not lost. Human beings, while capable of the worst, are also capable of rising above themselves, choosing again what is good, and making a new start. End of quote. Francis' vision calls for an ecological conversion with nature as its root, humanity as its heart, and compassion as its core principle. One of the key features of this nexus between nature and human beings is security in harmonious community, both as to a physically safe and healthy place to live and as to economic, political, and social circumstances that reflect and respect the dignity of the human person and foster human flourishing. At a minimum, this requires individual and joint efforts to guarantee basic human rights. However, as Pope Francis reminds us, it requires that we look beyond protecting rights and do more. It requires that we care. Indeed, if we are to take integral ecology seriously, we must care for our common home as well as one another. There have been many deprivations of such security in harmonious community, but the current refugee crisis signals one of the worst with a record 65.3 million displaced men, women, and children who have fled war, political persecution, and lawlessness around the world leaving their homes, livelihoods, and at times other family members and friends behind. Of these, almost 20 million have undergone vetting by the United Nations as refugees and are ready to immigrate now. If we who are people of faith are to rise above the madding crowd, we need to inform ourselves enough to encounter negative attitudes about immigrants and refugees beginning with the person we see in the mirror. How do we confront 
the enemy of misinformation and wrong assumptions, beginning with ourselves and then taking it to others? What changes might we make if we are to do more than stand on the sidelines to one of the greatest tragedies in human and ecological history? What concrete steps can we take individually and jointly through local, national, and global institutions to respond impactfully? Integral ecology and the judgment of history rule out looking away. In short, we need to care and to act upon the indissoluble links among us as we see the world and ourselves through the mirrors of their eyes. To quote the refrain from Michael Jackson's song, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. For Wineskins, I'm Father Dave Bergner. Saint Padre Pio was a priest from Pietrelcina, Italy, who had the stigmata. To tell us more is Jim Kravanik. He is from St. Michael Church in Canfield. Francesco, named in honor of St. Francis of Assisi, was born to parents who were peasant farmers in the small Italian village of Petrolassini on May 25, 1887. From his childhood, Francesco was very devout and at an early age felt drawn to the priesthood. At the age of 15, he joined the Capuchins and became a novice a year later. He received the habit in 1902 and was ordained to the priesthood in 1910 after seven years of study, becoming known as Padre Pio. He was drafted during World War I, but when he was discovered to have tuberculosis, he was discharged. In 1917, he was assigned to the friary in San Giovanni Rotondo, 75 miles from the city of Bari on the Adriatic. On September 20, 1918, Padre Pio was kneeling in front of a large crucifix when he had a vision of Jesus. When the vision ended, he had the stigmata, the visible marks of the crucifixion, in his hands, feet, and side, making him the first stigmatized priest in the history of the church. The doctor who examined him could not find any natural cause for the wounds. Life became more complicated after that. Medical doctors, church authorities, and curiosity seekers came to see Padre Pio. In 1924 and again in 1931, the authenticity of the stigmata was questioned. Padre Pio was not permitted to celebrate Mass publicly or to hear confessions. He did not complain of these decisions, which were soon reversed. However, he wrote no letters after 1924. His only other writing, a pamphlet on the agony of Jesus, was done before 1924. Padre Pio rarely left the friary after he received the stigmata, but busloads of people soon began coming to see him. Each morning after a 5 a.m. Mass in a crowded church, he heard confessions until noon. He took a mid-morning break to bless the sick and all who came to see him. Every afternoon he also heard confessions. In time, his confessional ministry would take 10 hours a day. Penitents had to take a number so that the situation could be handled. Many of them have said that Padre Pio knew details of their lives that they had never mentioned. Padre Pio saw Jesus in all the sick and suffering. At his urging, a fine 350-bed hospital was built on nearby Mount Gargano. The idea arose in 1940. A committee began to collect money. Ground was broken in 1946. Building the hospital was a technical wonder because of the difficulty of getting water there and of hauling up the building supplies. One of Padre Pio's sufferings was that unscrupulous people several times circulated prophecies that they claimed originated from him. He never made prophecies about world events and never gave an opinion on matters that he felt belonged to the church authorities to decide. Upon his death on September 23, 1968, the wounds were no longer visible. In fact, there was no scarring and the skin was completely renewed. He had predicted 50 years prior that upon his death, the wounds would heal. The wounds of the stigmata were not the only mystical phenomenon experienced by Padre Pio. The blood from the stigmata had an odor described by many as similar to that of perfume or flowers, and the gift of bilocation was attributed to him. Padre Pio had the ability to read the hearts of the penitents who flocked to him for confession, which he heard for 10 or 12 hours per day. 
Padre Pio used the confessional to bring both sinners and devout souls closer to God. He would know just the right word of counsel or encouragement that was needed. He died on September 23, 1968, at the age of 81. His funeral was attended by about 100,000 people. He was beatified in 1999 and canonized in 2002. For Wineskins, I'm Jim Krivnik. Talking with Sister Janet Gardner from Beatitude House. You know, Sister, in our last segment, we talked about some of the many hurdles that these women, along with their families, have to go through. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure you have some very wonderful stories and success stories as yeah. well, because yeah. in your helping them to help themselves, they've been able to overcome mm -hmm. these generational issues and these poverty and homeless issues that many of them experience. I know you have something to share with us if you can do that. And then there's a special recognition that Beatitude House uh, yes. received. We'd mm -hmm. like to talk about that as well. Yeah. I think one of the, the wonderful things of working with the women that we do work with is to be able to see them, despite all the obstacles, take steps that they become very proud of sure. in their lives. Uh, we just had a woman uh, two weeks ago that got a job, first job that she has had. She was able to wear her uniform. She would go to work. She came back, and when that first paycheck came in, she was so proud of herself, and her kids were so excited that mom came home with a paycheck and was able to provide for them. So things like that happen. Right. We have a number of women who have been able to go back to school you know, they may have had to drop out of Eastern Gateway or, or YSU or a training program. We've had some that have gone for an STNA for nursing, and that's such a need in, in the area, so it's good that they're able to do that. They've been able to begin to build up some funds for themselves because they only stay with us for a, a short time in transitional housing and need to move on. So our staff really have worked very hard with them. We've got a, a dedicated staff. They might be the bleeding hearts, you know, uh, really wanting to help people. They'll go over and above the norm to be able to help these women, whether it be just through case management or making sure that they've got a book for their child to read at night, helping them with school supplies, you know, making sure that they've got what they need. I'd like to read just a, a quick letter from one of the women that was part of Beatitude House. Dear Beatitude House staff, I am blessed with your faith in me. Your faith in me allowed me to believe in myself you were the first to grant me an opportunity to fulfill my shelf in life, giving me hope and inspiration. Your much needed support in, in rebuilding my life, starting anew and reuniting with my children, because some of them come and need to, through children's services, reunite with their children. We help them with that process. Without your faith in me, none of my successes would have transpired. I will never squander this opportunity. Talk about people who, when they have a chance, sure. can lead normal lives. Mm -hmm. I greatly appreciate all you've done for me and my family. Because of you, I see greatness in my future. So when you get a note like Absolutely. this, you mm -hmm. get even a smile. And we've had women who, who have left feeling that we didn't even do enough for them. Mm -hmm. And they'll come back in two or three months and say, I'm really s sorry, I really didn't take advantage of everything that you offered. I know that you were working for my good. Mm -hmm. So in the end, it's good to see so many successes. That is, that's wonderful. You were talking about the recognition, yes. Dominion Gas of Northeast Ohio and Cleveland Magazine recently honored us with a Community Impact Award one of two from the Youngstown area with the uh, Youngstown Community Development Corporation for our fundraiser, actually, for making people know, helping people to know what Beatitude House is and who we serve and the need in the community, and then getting the community involved through our repelling event last September, Over the Edge, we called it, right. coming off the Metropolitan Building, asking people to raise money for Beatitude House, for the women and children that we serve, and we serve over 400 every year, 
for the chance to go over this building. So we had businesses involved and worked very closely with the restaurants in the area down there with a number of the, uh, the schools. They had a band come and the you know, various groups came to kind of perform throughout the day. So it, it really brought people into Youngstown as well. You know, the community needs to have a sense of we belong here, but have a reason for doing things mm -hmm. as well. So it was a, it was a very nice mesh of both meeting a need and also bringing the community together. That's great. They were very supportive. Now, Sister, there's many people who like to contribute to Beatitude House. Any particular mode of how they can get in contact with you, either through the phone or through the internet? That you like the to best share? way is uh, through our website, www.beatitudehouse.com, or just call us at uh, 330 744-3147. We'll be glad to help out. You can donate online. We do have a list there, our wish list of things that we really need at the Attitude House to provide for our family. And they can come to our events as well. We're going to do Over the Edge again in September. So if there's a business or a person, a group that would like to have a group go down, raise some money for a good cause mm -hmm. and have some fun going down over that building as I did last year. So, <laughs> And you're still with us. I'm still <laughs> here. Everyone who went down That's is good. still with us. What would be one of your greatest dreams in working with Beatitude House as you kind of look down to the future? Well, we're celebrating our 25th anniversary this mm -hmm. year. So we have a major gift initiative that we are starting. We're really looking for over the th next three years to raise $5 million. We want to maintain and enhance the programs we have, the housing programs, and we also have an English language learning program for another 20 women and their children to help them integrate into our society. We want to extend our transitional housing. The women come to us for just six months, but when you are coming from nothing, six months is a very short time to get your life together. So we want to be able to extend our services to them after they leave us, to be able to offer the support and case management afterwards. And we also want to reinvigorate our educational piece through a Beatitude House Scholars Program, helping women who really do want to go on for further schooling, higher education, or training to assist them to do that for a two-year period, renewable another two years if they are going for a full bachelor's, for example. So we have good plans. We really want to try to meet the need and bring women out of poverty. Well, Sister Janet Gardner, we know the wonderful work that you do, that Beatitude House does. We know that we want the folks that are with us to be supportive and to continue to mm -hmm. uh, contribute in many ways, whether it's time, talent, or treasure yes. to Beatitude House, and to in particularly keep you in their prayers as well, because through the power of prayer, Absolutely. that wonderful work will continue. That's how it all happens. Wonderful. That's how it all comes together. Thank you very much for being thank with you. us again. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. Have a good day, and God be with you. For more pertinent information and to listen to Wineskins, visit www.doy.org, the website of the Catholic Diocese of Youngstown. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. As in past elections, the Catholic Diocese of Youngstown has provided opportunities to help voters meet their duties as faithful citizens. Information is always provided through the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops. On September 21st, the Diocese of Youngstown will provide two opportunities for all faithful citizens to gather at St. Michael Church in Canfield from 1 to 4 in the afternoon or at St. Michael Church in Canton from 6 to 9 in the evening. Bishop George Murray of the Diocese of Youngstown and Jim Tobin, the Social Concerns Associate Director for the Catholic Conference of Ohio, will speak. For more information, contact the Catholic Diocese of Youngstown at 330-744-8451, extension 302. I am Marino. Je suis Marino. I am Marinol. I believe that we are all connected to each other, and that it is the gift of compassion that unites us and makes us one. 
It doesn't matter what language, culture, or tradition we come from. We can share compassion wherever we are. Mary Knoll, an American Catholic organization of priests and brothers, has been reaching out to those in need for nearly 100 years in 26 countries throughout the world. Mary Knoll dedicates 86 cents of every dollar donated to their programs, and with your help, they can do more. Missioners, workers, volunteers, supporters, we are all Mary Knoll. I am Mary Knoll. Yo soy Mary no. I'm Father Mike. And I am Mary no. 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 Church World Service believes that being self reliant is a joy everyone should share. So around the block or around the world, share the joy. Our song today is from the CD called Love Road. It is by Tim Burke. Take the road you see For the light that shines before you Will help you through the night And you will know and plant the seed And if lost, he will find you If blind, he'll help you see As we celebrate this 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we will hear more about the sacred scriptures by Father Larry Friend. He is pastor of St. Louis Church in Louisville. Did you ever hear a story in church that seemed rather difficult and confusing? My difficult and confusing be what we would call the gospel proclaimed just a few moments ago? It seems like Jesus praised the dishonesty of the steward who had just lost his job. But that's not what Jesus praised. He praised the steward for his wisdom. It was wise of the steward to reduce the debts of others, to lessen their burdens. And it's true that the steward did this so that he might win friends and gain another job. Nevertheless, he was wise in that regard. There is something very realistic about this gospel. Isn't it true there's something about all of us that is not 
honest all of the time? Today's gospel helps us deal with this truth. We need to give it plenty of thought and prayer to get past its difficulty and confusion. Maybe this is the kind of gospel that makes us wish that Jesus would have told simple stories. But think about it. Our lives are not always simple. Our lives are often complicated. Sometimes answers don't come easily to the questions we ask. And that was true for the apostles, too. We can be sure that they were often clueless concerning just what it meant to follow Jesus. And in the context of today's gospel, in their experience of journeying with Jesus to Jerusalem, they were not only clueless, but also half-hearted. Are there times when we are clueless? Times when our efforts to be true disciples of Christ are half-hearted? And even if our hearts are in the right place, we find that so many messages from society urge us to think just the opposite and do just the opposite of what Jesus taught. Maybe we find more of a clue and our hearts are in the right place if we realize that the gospel calls us to be effective stewards of what God gave us and to release some of the debts people owe to us. Yes, we are called to be effective stewards of what God gave us. What do we really own anyway? Do we realize that everyone and everything we have is on loan to us from God? What about releasing some of the debts people owe to us? I'm not necessarily talking about monetary matters. Sometimes we hold people hostage with our resentment, our unforgiving spirits, and our own unresolved anger. Might we pray that God give us the wisdom to set them free? Be a faithful steward of God's gifts. Be a wise steward of God's gifts. Release the unfair shackles we place on other people. Easier said than done? Certainly. So where do we start? Or where do we start over? The first step might be a simple prayer. I can't do this on my own, Lord. Then in the silence of our hearts, and in conversations with trusted friends, we learn to be good and wise stewards, and we learn to release others from the debts they owe us. For Wineskins, I'm Father Larry Friend. Jesus never commended dishonesty. He recommended consistency. He summed it up like this. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be attentive to one and despise the other. You cannot give yourself to both God and money. We have a wonderful creed. We profess a marvelous faith. What we need to do is line up our lives with what we say we believe. Consistency, thou art a rare gem. Wineskins is a production of CTNY, the Catholic Telecommunications Network of Youngstown. It is brought to you by the Annual Bishop's Appeal, the Catholic Communication Campaign, and St. Paul's Catholic Books and Gifts. I'm your host, Father Jim Corda, wishing you a beautiful week.